Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Now, if you were to ask me who I think has done the most research currently here on planet Earth about the afterlife and who has shared their findings freely with more people in the world than anybody, I would have to say it's our guest today, along with her husband. Wendy Zamet, along with her husband, Victor, have explored the evidence of the afterlife for close to 30 years. Each Friday, they send out the Friday Afterlife Report from their home base in Sydney, Australia. They are co-authors of the book, A Lawyer Presents the Evidence for the Afterlife, and they're on the board of directors for the Afterlife Research and Education Institute. In addition, our special guest, Wendy Zamet, is working hard behind the scenes of the upcoming Afterlife Symposium, which will be held September 13th through 16th in Scottsdale, Arizona. Wendy organizes and participates in most of the weekly Zoom online meeting groups to educate and touch as many lives as possible about the reality of the afterlife and ways to communicate with our loved ones in the spirit world. Prior to her commitment to research and sharing the reality of the afterlife, Wendy worked for a number of years as a professional psychologist, college school counselor, before transferring to adult education. You can find out much more about the Zamets on their website, victorzamet.com, and of course, the website, afterlifesymposium.org. Wendy Zamet, my good friend, a warm welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Thank you, Sandra. It's an absolute honor to be here. We are just blown away with your work and the way that you are taking the message to a wider audience. And it's, oh, thank it's, you. it's been fabulous watch, watching you develop and grow and, and, your, and all of your listeners and, your, and uh, uh, subscribers. It's just oh. wonderful to see the community that you have built. Well, thank I'm you. very much into community, and, and I can see that you are doing it. Lovely. Oh. And you know, when it all started back in the day when I started doing my research, lo and behold, I found the uh, Friday Afterlife Report at victorzamet.com. And when I, you know, I listened and you know, I looked at your um, emails every week, and then at the point when I first wrote my book, I thought, how can I get this out there? And so I wrote to you and Victor, you had no idea who I was, but you freely shared my book and several chapters of the book. Uh, and that's when it all started, when your Afterlife Report community embraced it. And the next thing you know, uh, my book was launched. So I owe you and Victor a huge <laughs> gratitude for that. Oh, that's wonderful, Sandra. We are just so happy to just be one tiny little part in this. And what we want to do is we want to have millions of people out there spreading this message. This is, this is every human being's right to know this. I agree. Uh, and I, I think you'd agree. There's so much unnecessary suffering. There's That's so right. much uh, angst. When people lose somebody, they think, oh, my God, they're in hell. Are they in hell? Are they in hell? Where are they? Right. It's a horrible, horrible feeling. And yes. uh, it's, just, it's just something that is so needed in the world today. So when many did, people are just lost. I don't mean to interrupt you, but how did you, in, Victor, get involved with this so many years ago? What made you started exploring the, start exploring the afterlife? Well, well, that's a really interesting question. We, we were always interested in social justice, not so much religion. We were interested in human rights and Victor was a human rights campaigner. He used to speak on the, the Sydney Domain, a public speaking platform every Sunday about human rights and social justice. And he had a law practice and we were very much involved in, in sort of intellectual activities. And then one day Victor started having psychic experiences he was suddenly getting flashes of intuition about his clients. I think a lot of lawyers are intuitive, but mm. he was getting big time intuition and he was sort of a bit startled by this. And not long after, he started hearing voices. Mm. And like everybody else, he's saying, oh my goodness me, 
is this pathological? He became clairaudient and he was getting messages from people he'd known who'd crossed over. Just little messages, you know, like, mm-hmm. hello, I'm, I'm fine or, or I'm sorry about this. Anyway, so that was kind of a, a little bit upsetting to our worldview. We were members of the Humanist Society and we used to go along to humanist meetings. So we started doing what we've always done, which is research. And we, we, we both had many, many years of university level research. And so we went along to the University of Sydney Library to look this stuff up. And we wanted, looked up in the index Afterlife. And I think we found two books in the entire library, uh, which, was, which was a bit of a joke. It gives right. you an idea of what, how much the acad- academia knows Anyway, soon after that, we started, uh, we found, discovered the Theosophical Society Library and we got going on that and a whole new world opened up. And you know how it is with synchronicity. One thing leads to another, to another, and books fall into your hand, literally. I can remember a wonderful incident when Victor was waiting for me and a lady came out of an op shop, an opportunity shop, like a goodwill shop with a box of books. And she said, here, mister, I'm giving these books away. Would you like one? He said, oh, why not? Put his hand in and he picked out Arthur Finlay, The Rock of Truth. Wow. You, can you imagine it? Kind of like a synchronicity story. For those of you who don't know, Arthur Finlay was one of the greatest afterlife researchers ever and the founder of the Arthur Finlay College for Psychical Mm -hmm. Research. Marvellous book, The Rock of Truth. Anyway, one thing led to another and we started going to afterlife meetings. We had, you know, little meetings. We were out three or four nights a week. We were reading. And one of the things that struck us fairly soon was that most of the people at these meetings were women. And we said, where are all the men? Where are your husband? Oh, my husband thinks I'm crazy. My husband thinks this is illogical. My husband thinks there's no evidence for this. Uh, My husband thinks I'm being ripped off by by charlatans. So we sort of said, these women need to have a book that they can take to their husbands and say, look, this, there is evidence for this. Some of the greatest scientists in the world investigated this. I am not crazy. I am not deluded. What I have is the most powerful information in the universe. And so that's why we wrote the book. A lawyer presents the evidence for the afterlife. And it is chock full with just about every modality of afterlife evidence, communication. I mean, you you can't even imagine everything that's in it. It is fantastic. It is like a encyclopedia for the afterlife. What we wanted to give people was the vocabulary for their own experiences. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people have things happening and they say, oh, they don't know how to research it or go further because they don't know the name of it. They don't know, oh, this is clairaudience, for example, or they don't understand that there's a whole lot of work on apparitions or near-death experiences or uh, what we what we call peak experiences or expanded consciousness so we wanted to give people a map and a, a sense of where to look where to go to find their own evidence and as you have done in your book how they can have their own experiences because i think you you would certainly agree that the experiential is the most powerful Absolutely. Yes, we can hear somebody's experiences, we can read something in a book, but if you sit at a gathering and whether you're witnessing evidential mediumship, trance mediumship, physical mediumship, the experience is life-changing. You will never be the same. There's, there's no explanation other than our loved ones coming through from the unseen world to explain what's happening. And, totally. and no one can tell me otherwise. No one can say, yeah, but <laughs> you weren't there, you know. Absolutely, Sandy. And I know you've had a lot of those, what I call, the, oh, my God, it's real moments. I know, <laughs> it is. How did you start the Friday Afterlife Report? Well, we, we, when we first got a web page, the Afterlife Report started way back in 1990. 
and mm -hmm. uh, there, there wasn't a lot available. There were very few websites on the internet in those days that That's had right. anything to do with afterlife. Mm -hmm. Very, very little. And uh, we, we just sort of started it and we said, okay, well, we'll try and get this out to people. And uh, it's gone from there. It's gone from strength to strength. And uh, now, of course, we have, believe it or not, one of our greatest numbers of subscribers are from China. We have a huge mm. number of people in China. And I think it's because there's nothing available there. Yes. In many countries, and that was something that we found too. We, we traveled a lot in our early days. And we found that in many countries, because the, this information was considered occult or forbidden, yes. the books were not available. Mm -hmm. People, and that's why for, for many, many years, we, we made this, uh, the whole book was on the internet free of charge. That's right. Because we wanted, and we put it in different languages so that people who are in countries where this information is not available could get it. And uh, that, was, that was part of our mission. Eventually, we just got tired of posting the information out. People wanted books and people wanted... We got tired of having to go to the post office every Friday with, with a whole lot of books and post them out one at a time. And so when Amazon came up, our publisher begged us uh, to put it into a book and uh, pass it over to him so we would have more time to actually do research. So that's what we actually did, reluctantly. We, we still like, like, and we still have the old version of the book for, in full, for free on the internet. Yes, and you simply go to victorzamet.com to find out more. But it's beautiful, it's fantastic. Um, and I thank you and Victor for all the work that you have done for humanity. You know, I believe from all the people that I've interviewed have had near-death experiences, Wendy, that you get this thing called the life review, or most people do. Yes. And yes. not only do you see the things maybe you've done wrong or you could have done better, and you see them from the other person's perspective, the people you impact, but what follows is all the good that you've done and the ripple effect. And I just know when it's your time and Victor's time to cross the veil, you will see how many people um, you've helped through grief, how many people you've given life to, how many people you've sparked their interest to explore, and then they've gone on to share. So I just know that you and your husband has have really been the, probably the biggest force we've had on planet Earth for sharing the reality of the afterlife and helping people improve their lives. So on behalf of the world, Wendy, <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. you. You're too kind. And, and I, I think all, every one of us, when we cross over, the, the feeling that I get is I could have done so much more. Wow. I think those of us who, who are aware of this, it, it's such an incredible privilege to have this knowledge. You know, we're, you know, we're sort of in the 1% in the world who have the time, the skills, the education, the technology to mm -hmm. do this. We've been put in such a privileged position in the Western world you know, when, yes. you, when you, th you, you think about the number of people who don't even have clean water in the world, mm -hmm. that kind, of, that kind of, of luck or privilege that we've been given requires a, a response from all of us. I agree. And now how did the AREI come about, the Afterlife Research and Education Institute? Because I know you're one of the founding members. And yes. Well, when did that dream become a reality because you're now we're putting on these the big symposium right. and zoom meetings very exciting. <laughs> I, I i it's all sort of passed in a blur and i i think it's something <laughs> something that we we that just evolved i think it, it evolved initially from one of the conferences that we went to and we got talking with craig hogan and we were impressed we've been thinking for a long time about legacy we're getting older, and a lot of us in the afterlife movement are, shall we say, on the northern side of 50. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and we want to encourage the next generation. We also, we, we've got a, a vi our vision is, for, for years we keep saying, there has to be more money for afterlife research. We need afterlife research. Our mediums, our, our physical mediums particularly, 
need to be protected. They shouldn't have to be going out trying to earn a living from this. They should be in a position yeah. where they can be doing and developing their work in a protected uh, position. Our researchers, all of the research that we have for, afterlife, for the afterlife has been done by people working in their own time after a hard day at work. Yes. We don't have professional researchers. We don't have any money. We don't have any grants. The universities are not interested. The universe, science is controlled by big business, by the pharmaceutical industry and the military. People keep saying, why are there no, no, no scientific evidence? There's no sci there is scientific evidence, but there would be a lot more if we had the money for the research. And the problem is, even Julie Byshaw, bless her heart, doing wonderful research with mediumship, she's doing it on the smell of an oily rag. She'd earn more if she was working in the local supermarket. She had to do, she started her research in the, for the drug industry. That's the job that she was. She was trained to, to assess drugs. And now she's got the vision. She's had that experience and she's researching mediumship. But she's, she and the Winbridge Institute are struggling for money. Mm -hmm. Where's the money coming from? And that's what we decided. We were talking with Craig Hogan about this. We have to raise money for afterlife research. That's our mission. We have a couple of things we want to do. We want to raise money. We want to spread awareness. We want to share. Instead of all of us are working in a vacuum, all of us are working in little silos. That's we right. want to bring people together, yes. not duplicate the work. We want to share the work. We want to get this message out there in a big way. The world needs it so dramatically, so badly at the moment. And so we want to, we, and we want to encourage the young ones. The, the ones coming up, the 20-year-olds who are seeking, they're wanting to connect with their spirit guides. They want to have the wisdom of the elders of our tribe. But the wisdom of our elders is kept in little small packets and it's not accessible. Right. So that's kind of where the vision came from, working with Craig. And our vision is very much global. It's not just America. And that's why we're so excited about it's just come at the right time with Zoom. Zoom has, has been such a fabulous platform and we can, our, our vision is to have little groups all over the place. Uh, we can beam in speakers with Zoom. We can get people uh, sharing resources and all sorts of things happening. One of the most exciting things for me about the Zoom groups is we have people who are isolated. And I, I think you have this in the same thing with, with, with your programs as well. Yes. People tell us, I'm living in an area where every, nobody thinks the same way that I do. Nobody believes this. Who can I talk to? How can I get resources? And what we're doing is we're getting the best mediums, we're getting the best researchers and zooming them into their own TV, their own uh, internet screen, and they can watch all, all of this and, and learn. And even the, what, what's happening is even the medi mediums work in isolation. Now we're getting, we're get, we have a wonderful group of physical mediums all meeting together. And they say, oh, what are you doing? And how did you do this? And did you have this when you were developing? And, oh, and helping each other. And this is something unprecedented. It's fantastic. And for our listener slash viewer, because we are recording this on the Zoom meeting site right now, uh, Zoom is a platform where you can participate from the comfort of your own home, preferably on your laptop, but also on your iPad or your iPhone. And you can see and be in like this online meeting space. So even though if, if you're a listener of my show, you hear me promote the Afterlife Symposium and Scottsdale, Arizona every year, and that's a place we can get together physically, but if you can't make it, or even if you can, and, and it's a great to join in on these Zoom meetings, you can meet people from all over the world, and there's breakout rooms and chatting on different subjects, and it is, I, I'm so grateful for this technology because it's, it's free, you know, and um, on the Victor Zamet 
website. If you go to victorzamet.com forward slash Zoom, you can see all the past Zoom meetings that have been recorded, uh, the upcoming schedule of the things going on. Of course, we'd love it if you become a, a member of the AREI, just $25 a year, but then you'd get the emails for everything that we're up to and we're doing. And then the big global vision is to start with these online meetings, which I think will always happen, but then all of a sudden when there's a group of people in a certain town, next thing you know, you're going to be able to meet for coffee and without uh, not too far down the road, you know, this, you will have friends in real time because I know I'm one of many people that I can talk to you guys about this now. Um, but how many people do I have in my own life that I can talk freely about? Not too many, you know, so we get to unite. So I'm excited, Wendy. It is exciting, Sandra. And you're, you're such an important integral ambassador for AREI and, and, and for the vision because you, I know you hold the vision, which is lovely. I and do. You, you've got this whole thing of, of little groups of community supporting each other. Uh, right. And this, this is the future. Organized religion is shrinking, but spirituality is growing. And these There's kinds no of real, group, re, real groups are, are, are the future. Yeah. And if we could just imagine, you know, it's so... One of the things I, I teach, Wendy, is I know that as human beings, we're very hard on ourselves. We would never be as hard on another human being as we are on ourselves very often. And the more we talk about who we really are, and these are souls having a human experience, if you're around a group of people and your friends are in the same conversation that we're souls having a human experience, they're not going to let us beat up on ourselves. They're going to hold us to anything's possible. Any dreams are possible. Miracles are possible. Uh, connecting with our loved ones are possible, talking positively instead of negatively, being like in the driver's seat of our life. So to have people support us on that, as opposed to, you know, what happens normally, I think a lot of people complain, you know, and so yes. I, I see a world yes. with less complaints, more people responsible, and making things happen. So and well, this, is what you're going, this is what yeah. you're going to be talking about at the symposium, isn't it? I sure am. I have witnessed so many miracles in my life and I have really, now this is not 24 seven that I remember that I'm a soul having a human experience, <laughs> but it does help to talk to so many guests and then have you as my friend and being part of plotting out the symposium to remember who we really are. But when we remember who we are and you know, I think we all have an ego that fights it, doesn't, doesn't want to Absolutely. embrace who we are. And that's just part of being human. But when we really recognize who we are and then add, it's like, um, I'm a chef by trade. So when we add the right ingredients, you know, we can really create a masterpiece. But if we don't exactly. know the ingredients and we're just throwing sugar and flour and maybe some <laughs> chocolate and maybe some eggs into the mix, who knows what's going to happen. But I say miracles are possible. I have witnessed in my life so many things that you can call them synchronicities you can call them miracles whatever that may be um but i've seen them i've had them happen i've had people around me have them happen and how do we create a space for that and i truly believe when we can embrace that we are souls having a human experience that we have all the same parts as our friends in the unseen world you know um magic can happen so that's fun Absolutely. for me Absolutely. Yeah. Shall we talk about what's going to happen at the symposium? Let's do it. Let's do it. Now, is it okay if I share screen? I just want to quickly I would go love through. That. I, what I would like to do with everybody is go through the program so that people have a sense of what's actually on. This program is incredible. I cannot talk about a banquet. I mean, the whole symposium is a banquet. Uh, not just one dish. There's so many amazing people yes. happening. Now, I do Wendy, have to... Before Sorry. we start, just a couple of reminders. There are people that are listening to this and not having the pleasure of viewing. And if you are listening and you would like to see the actual screen that Wendy's going to share, uh, even after listening to this, you can go to YouTube and just type in We Don't Die Radio, Wendy Zamet, and that will pull it up. Um, and the also other thing is if you are somebody who cannot attend the symposium, we fully understand, but just pay attention to some of the names that we bring up, some of the things that they're discussing, because it's going to help you know about who they are and what some of the current cutting edge afterlife research 
and communication things are going on. So like I said, even if you can't attend, please listen in because you're going to learn some things that you thought you're going to think, I didn't know people were doing that. So anyway, that's, <laughs> that's exactly right. Yes. yes. Okay. So let me just quickly share screen and there we go. And here I'm on the uh, symposium website. This is um, afterlifeinstitute.org forward slash symposium. Over here on the right hand side, we have 2018 symposium. I'm just going to move that window over there. And I'm going to go to sessions because this is, uh, no, schedule. That's what I need, schedule, because this is where it's at. Now, one thing I do want to tell people is if you're pushed for time, we've had a lot of people who are working uh, or very busy, like most of us are, mm -hmm. and they said, look, I can really only afford one day to come to the symposium. So we've decided to allow people to come just for one day. And so the, 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 tr the challenge is going to be which day? Am I going to come on Friday or am I going to come on Saturday? So as we have a look at the program, I'd like you to ask yourself, well, which day would I choose, Friday or Saturday? And we'll come back to that in a moment. On the Thursday of the Friday of the symposium, it's not actually, uh, we're not actually having the symposium itself. We're going to have workshops and some wonderful workshops. Scott Milligan is going to be doing his workshop on altered states. This we're opening to the public. So pe the workshops are actually open to people who can only come just for a workshop. They don't have to be part of the symposium to come. Sandra, can you tell us a little bit about Scott's altered states workshop? I sure can. And first, if, if, uh, if you've listened to the show, you've heard us talk about physical mediumship, and this is something that is very, very rare. And the two best physical mediumship mediums in the entire world, Scott Milligan and, and David Thompson, are going to be at the symposium. And this is where the, how do I even say this, the dead become real again. I mean, it, it is nothing short of a, of a miracle, but it is real. Um, and Scott Milligan trains people in um, physical mediumship in the altered states in closing your eyes and how we can blend with our team in the spirit world, how we can sit and over time really strengthen that communication. And so what his workshop is going to be, it's going to be a day of you uh, hearing lecture, but also sitting with your eyes closed and being introduced to those that love you more than anybody. And that is your spirit team. And for many of us, you know, it's the first time we've actually felt the presence of these guides, if you'd like to call them, those who, like I said, love us more than we love ourselves. Those are there that are our champions cheering us on in life. And it's how to connect with them, how to be able to listen to them, how to know that they're our teammates helping us through this life. And it's, it's to build that connection. So uh, while it's not magic, it is reality. It is very, very special to be to learn about it and then to be guided through several times throughout the day to have this experience of what does it feel like when your spirit team draws close and how to listen to them and how do you start building that relationship because once you start that and you realize some of these messages that come into your head of love and uh, divine thoughts and new ideas um, may not be coming from your subconscious, may be coming from your spirit team. So his whole workshop that day is what the altered states are, uh, and that's getting you with your eyes closed into that level of communication with those that love you. Lovely. And that workshop goes from nine to four, but there yes. are a lot of other alternatives as well. I mean, there's so, we talk about spoilt for choice. Some people might want to go on a Jeep tour from Arizona from 8 until 1 o'clock. Uh, from 10 until 12, Joe Higgins is going to be collecting people's stories about science. So mm -hmm. we're having just, we're just going to, anybody who just wants to hang out with us, uh, I'll be with Joe in the centre ballroom and we're going to be talking, sharing stories about science. David Thompson is going to be showing people how to sit for physical mediumship. He's going to have two little workshops, each for one and a half hours. 
uh, explaining what physical mediumship is and how you can start your own circle. Another alternative, Rosemary Ellen Guiley is going to talk about how to communicate with the afterlife using a black mirror. And this is where you gaze into the mirror and you actually see your loved ones appear. And pretty exciting stuff. Um, Dr. Anne Clark is going to be doing a, leading a workshop on soul wisdom uh, for healing from great, great loss. And she's head of research at the Newton Institute and does a lot of work on between life regressions. So that what happens is she takes you into a state where you are actually planning your own life and finding out what you had put in, in plan. Suzanne Wilson from 5 until 6.30 is going to be doing a reading, a platform where she's going to be talking about uh, messages from the afterlife. And then in the evening, we're going to have a lovely sound healing and meditation from Gretchen Bickett and followed by a socialization and an opening of the symposium, which will go between 6.30 and 8.30. So that's the Friday. And that's Thursday, Thursday. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's okay. That's We're the, excited. That's and if you option, don't, option. if you don't see a price listed next to one of those things, it's free. So there's just some, some of the speakers have uh, donated their time and some, there is a cost to some of them, but some of them are also free. So come be a part. Even so if you're traveling people. alone, it's the best place to be because oh, yes. one we're person gonna, and now you're not traveling alone. You, know? you won't lots be traveling alone. We have lot, we're going to have lots of people, especially working to meet you and make you feel at home. That's right. And with our whole emphasis on that day is just for people to hang out together. It's just a day for people to talk. There'll always be people around to talk. We're going to take everybody for lunch together. Uh, we're going to hang out and you, you will just get a sort of, an, this is an early start to the, the festivities. The big stuff starts happening on Friday, 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 September the 17th. Now remember, you've got to make a decision Friday or Saturday. <laughs> the 14th. Be a hard one. It's Friday, Friday the 14th. 14th. I couldn't, I'm sorry, I couldn't read that number. We're excited. Yes. Okay. We start that morning at 8.15 with a little opening and then Sonia Rinaldi, the wonderful Sonia Rinaldi, is going to show us her latest research. And uh, as I was telling you earlier, Sandra, do you remember that, that scene from Star Wars when uh, Princess Leia appears as a hologram and yes. she says, help me Obi-Wan Kenobi. Well, Sonia's getting that kind of stuff happening. We're getting three-dimensional hologram holographic images and she's going to be talking about the images that she's getting through instrumental transcommunication she's going to have uh, she's recently she's take she called for volunteers to who would like to have a picture of this loved one in spirit trans transmitted and she had 30 people put their hands up, say, yes, me, 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 please, please, my, my son, my daughter. And she worked hard and she got pictures for each and every one of them. That's right. Can you believe it? And they're not and, pictures as, I mean, they're not pictures like duplicated from how they live. They're different pictures. No, some no. are a little older, some are a little younger. That's the amazing and thing. It's, it's unbelievable, but it's real. So in Brazil yeah. is her laboratory, and for her years she has dedicated her life to making a difference, but getting video, getting pictures, getting lots of audio, a lot of voices. And this, this is real, folks. This is very, very real. You will be blown away at her pre presentation of what, how those in the spirit world through the scientists on the other side are working to bring these images forward. It's mind blowing, it's fantastic. Absolutely. And each, at each hour you have a choice of three events. This is, this is gonna be a big symposium. It's not just one event, it's three. So then we have Rosemary Ellen Guiley is going to talk about dream visits from the dead. 
you know when you have a contact dream and how to have a contact dream how to have a dream where you actually have a connection Tina Powers is a reporter from the other side she's going to be doing spirit messages and talking uh, and reporting from the afterlife David Thompson is going to tell us about how people materialize and then he's going to go into a deep trance and William will take over his body. You're going to be talking about somebody, you'll be talking with someone who has been in the spirit world since about uh, 1900. William will be, you'll be able to ask questions to William and he will, questions of a philosophical nature, not personal questions. That's right. Things about the afterlife. <clears throat> Pardon me. We have a group who are going to be, uh, uh, this is the Sado group is going to be talking about uh, and demonstrating um, their communication with the other side. We have a trans medium there. Mary Beth Mank is going to talk about uh, how to maintain a relationship with your loved one, with your partner in the other side, on the other side. And she's going to be sharing some wonderful tapes of people who have actually done that where they talk, you can hear them talking to each other. Even though the wife is in the spirit world, the husband is here and they have long conversations through the medium. That's right. It's incredible, just incredible. Incredible stuff. Melinda Kushner is a wonderful medium and she's going to talk about your soul's journey. Lunch, we have an hour and a half for lunch so that everybody can network with their groups and get to talk with people. After lunch, we have Sandra Champlain. <laughs> we Don't Die Radio, Living the Miraculous Life. And that's going to be an amazing presentation. Uh, at the same time, Mark Nelson is going to be doing psychometry and mm -hmm. Anne Clark is going to be talking about Between Lives. At three o'clock, we have Suzanne Wilson uh, doing, talking about how to be your own medium. Scott Milligan is going to be talking about physical mediumship, past, present, and future. That's, these, these are, it's going to be hard making these decisions. It, it is. And I want to tell people that you go with your gut instinct because every, almost every one of these folks, um, there'll be f further information. You'll be able to meet them in the hallways. Their books will be there. Many of them I've interviewed. Many of them will be guests on the Zoom meetings. So just go with your gut where to be. And if you should find yourself in a room you didn't think you were meant to be in, sit there because there's something for you. So just trust, yeah, trust exactly. the process. Trust, your spirit trust. team is going to push you in the right direction or put you where you need to be. Because I always want to be everywhere and I get frustrated that I can't see everybody but you know what? I get out of it just what I meant to. And uh, for many of us, you know, it, you think, oh, gosh, I didn't plan on being in this room. And it's just what I needed to hear. So this, we're all very in this wise for words. life. Wise words, Sandra. Wise and words. Beyond. Yes. So, yeah, it'll be great. At four o'clock, we're going to be exploring what does it mean to be spiritual but not religious? And what's happening to religion? Where do you see the future of religion? That's going to be an exciting session. The alternative to that is the wonderful Mark Anthony, the psychic lawyer, That's who I right. believe you've already Great. interviewed. Yeah, he's and my last interview before this one, and he's so much fun, and he's so he bold. He is fun. It, he's it just bold. makes sense. He, he, yes. And he's going to talk about royals, rulers, spirits, and psychics, which will be That's right. a lot of fun. More people um, believed in the afterlife than you know. So... They might not have discussed it openly, but many, many people believe. Then there's going to be a special interest group for parents of children in heaven. They will be meeting in the Bouchon room. And then we're getting ready for our wonderful angel night. Now, you have to come to the angel night. We've got touched by an angel, angels in our lives. Every, this will be your chance to talk with the speakers that were there that day. We're going to ask the speakers to host tables mm -hmm. and be available to people to, to continue to ask questions, to share more about their talk. So you'll be able to go and sit with one of the speakers that you heard on Friday. You'll also have, we're going to have Anne Albers, who's incredibly popular. Uh, she's going to be talking, she's an international angel communicator. She's going to be giving 
uh, messages from the angels. Debbie Johnston is a fantastic animal communicator. She's the one <coughs> that uh, Suzanne Wilson uses to communicate with her animals. There's going to be people dressed up. We're going to ask people if they want to come dressed as an angel. You can wear white. You can wear a halo. You can put little wings on. Just have fun with it or just wear a white shirt, whatever. But yes. Just have, just have some fun. <coughs> Pardon me. But it's going to be a fun, fun night. Yeah. Can I mention so something, Wendy, yes, about please. the banquets? Um, oh, please do. I, I know that most of the things that I attend, I attend by myself. And my ego wants to pull me aside, go spend an evening in my room away from people because I don't know anybody. I didn't come with a friend. And these banquets are really social occasions for all of us. Number one, you got to eat, right? You got to eat. Number two, there's a lot of laughter. They're entertaining. And I know that I get to sit, whoever I'm sitting with ends up being a friend of mine that I have for the rest of my life to just set your ego aside that, you know, the ego can come back and have its alone time after the weekend, but join us, share your stories because often I think what comes out of my mouth might not make a difference, but you could be sitting next to the person and just by sharing a story from something you've experienced could be the thing that that person needed to hear. So come, participate, just ask people where they're from and I, new friendships will follow. But you've got to eat. They're fun. Uh, they're interactive. You'll enjoy them. But just be part of the community if you would and register for the banquets and be there with us because they will be fun. Thank you, Sandra. That's going to be such a fun night. And the <clears throat> Pardon me. We are having uh, special giveaways for the people who attend the banquets. We're going That's to right. be having a draw for a reading readings with mediums That's right. and uh, other goodies, which we are collecting at the moment. It sure so, are. Uh, Must be present to win. You have to be present. Absolutely. We're not going to announce them on the Friday night. We'll be announcing them on the Sunday morning. Uh, yes. Because we, we don't want people to be focusing on their reading all weekend. We want people to, right. uh, uh, we, we, we'll draw them on the Sunday morning. Yes. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now, that's, that's, that's going to be a big day. That's so, there is so much in that day. If, if you think about all those people that you're going to meet, all the friends you're going to have, and we want you also to be sharing your own stories. We're going to have people there collecting your stories so that um, we can uh, share them with, with others as well. This Saturday, we have a, another fabulous day lined up for you. In the morning, we've got William Peters talking about shared crossings. Now, this is all about how people who are on the point of crossing over start having glimpses of the afterlife. That's right. And I've seen William, William's presentations are absolutely fabulous. He, he has signs from spirit. He's, did you see him last year, Sandra? I did. It was so beautiful. Oh. Wasn't it amazing? And he, he had all these pictures of people who'd had cl uh, cloud signs after yes. their loved one had crossed over and rainbows. Amazing. I signs. remember... I remember that there was one fellow that they called the human exclamation point because he was always so filled with energy. And after he passed away, they had a service and everybody went to the beach and, you know, did this nice ceremony. And I don't know if they put the ashes in the water, what they did. But when they looked up, there was only one cloud in the sky, well, actually two, but it was the formation of an exclamation point. It was crazy I mean, it was just beautiful so i was filled with amazing, wasn't it? tears I, I in my eyes with all the too. stories yeah it's great that that was that was that's an amazing and william is an amazing amazing he man sure is. Uh, yes have you had him as a guest yet i have you have okay i have i've had most okay, well, of them not everybody, folks. No, had everybody. but most <laughs> If any of you are if any of you are interested, look up Sandra's in, uh, talk with William. It's, it's fabulous. Ellie Peche is going to be talking about entities, entity attachments, and Cyrus Kirkpatrick 
Cyrus is a lovely young man, one of, one of our favorite young people. He is having amazing out-of-body experiences. And he was telling, telling us last night on, this, on the Facebook group about uh, young people in the afterlife, what they're creating, and they're creating Harry Potter worlds. Can you believe wow. it? Yes, he's, he's talking about pop culture in the afterlife. And, why not? Uh, why not? He's saying you why can create not? anything. So they're creating Harry Potter worlds and all sorts of other great pop culture things. And uh, we were having a wonderful conversation about, he's going to be talking about rebutting misconceptions about the afterlife. And this is something he's passionate about yes. because he's had some amazing experiences in out-of-body travel, which, by the way, one of them was verified with a, me a reading with Suzanne Wilson. I don't know if he told you about that. No. But this is what we're interested in, in afterlife communication. Can we get things that people have in out-of-body experiences verified by mediums or verified in other ways? We're looking at triangulating experiences mm -hmm. so that we get much uh, more depth about uh, what, what actually happens. That's right. um, Walter Semkew is an expert on reincarnation. And he's got a fascinating presentation about Anne Frank. Anne Frank's reincarnation. He discovered that one. And uh, fascinating, the, the, the woman, fascinating evidential reincarnation. Professor Stafford Betty is a wonderful speaker. He, he's a university lecturer. Bless his heart. He gives courses about the afterlife in his university. And they're the, some of the most popular courses Gosh, I wish I'd had him as a lecturer. And he's going to be doing questions about the afterlife answered. Elizabeth Boisson and Irene Vivalides are going to be doing uh, about uh, collateral beauty, about uh, how you can turn grief into a growth experience. And yes. particularly for parents whose children have crossed over. And Craig Hogan is going to do his wonderful uh, demonstration of guided afterlife connections that everyone is a medium craig has got the most beautiful voice and he just leads the most beautiful meditation and showing you how you can connect with your loved ones gosh this is going to be a hard day to choose from i know Scott milligan is going to be doing a deep trance session now I scott's can... guide can you tell us about that you've, you've seen it I have seen it at, at Banyan Retreat. It, it is incredible. Uh, you'll get to know Scott by, if you go to his Thursday workshop or, you know, you just see him around. He's, or he has the uh, physical mediumship, past, present, future. You really get to know his personality. He's outgoing. He's fun. He's charming. He's just a nice guy. Well, he will sit for about 10 minutes or so and go into the altered state like we were talking about. And what he does is he quiets his mind with the intention and the love that his, his guides, his controls from the spirit world step in. So it might be um, a fellow by the name of Eric. Uh, it might be a fellow by the name of Daniel. There's another person that also speaks through him. He's got a, a team there. But it is an opportunity to ask questions. And again, it's not personal questions like, when will I meet my soulmate? It's more like, what is the purpose of suffering? Or how can I connect with my loved one? Or what's life like in the spirit world? But you will hear a very wise person with a completely different voice speak through Scott and answer your questions. And it's so distinct from Scott, they don't, um, like I just hesitated just now and I'm thinking, there's none of that. It's just brilliant wise, smooth flowing conversation, a lot of humor. If Daniel speaks, he's filled with humor. There's no guarantee who's going to speak. It could be a combination. If one doesn't know the answer, someone else might step in. But if you have any kind of question about the afterlife or something about this life, you know, that can help other people, please bring them because it's an opportunity to ask and you will be floored if you <laughs> witness. Same thing with David Thompson's deep trance when you hear a whole other voice coming through with the most precious words of inspiration. I get filled with goosebumps every time and you know that you're talking to heaven.
you are talk this is amazing you you're interviewing somebody from the other side that's right and it's it's not just one or two words this is like a full hour conversation that's incredible right. stuff absolutely incredible and albers is going to be doing expanded states of consciousness how to expand yourself to connect with angels she's great susan, just love it susan barnes is wonderful susan barnes takes a group for us on zoom a free group where you can learn to do spirit drawings, where you can learn to do uh, imagery. And she's going to be talking about art from the after, art in the afterlife, all kinds of ways that we can connect with our loved ones through uh, and mediums who are able to draw pictures of loved ones in the afterlife. That's uh, interesting. Um, Dr. Sherry Pearl is going to talk about her amazing journey from skeptic to healer. And she's, she has some wonderful experiences to share. She's recorded the, let's just touch on Sherry. Sherry has recorded uh, electronic voice phenomena and has trained people freely on her website how to do it. And this is recording voices of your loved ones. So she is a giver and she's not to be missed if you like that sort of, if you're interested in that sort of thing. She's great. At 11.15... Victor oh, look who's there. Yes. There. What We're really gonna... happens when we die and how do we know? What are we going to do? Now, most, we realize that most of the people coming do know what's going to happen when we die. But we're going to actually talk about, well, first of all, how do you answer the people who say, but science says there is no afterlife or the Bible is all we need. The Bible will tell us what happens when we die. Victor's going to talk about that. How do you, how do you respond to people who say, oh, you guys are communicating with devils and demons. That's right. That's, That's what right. you're doing this weekend. They're, you know, you're all being deluded. You're not communicating with your mother or your father. You're communicating with a devil who's per, per, who is impersonating them. Well, we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about what really happens and I'm going to take you on an audio visual tour of the afterlife, oh, showing, yeah. you, Excellent. showing you the best sources. I'm going to show you some of the sources from some extracts from the Leslie Flint tapes. I'm going to show you some wonderful pictures that were transmitted through instrumental transcommunication back in the 1980s and 90s, where we have actual pictures of venues in the afterlife. Amazing stuff. Excellent. And I'm going to show you some of the work of uh, Jürgen Ziva, who has uh, had out-of-body experiences in full consciousness for uh, over 40 years, and he draws what he sees. He is absolutely amazing. And we're going to talk also about the work of Chico Javier and Dr. Andre Luiz, who has, which has been made into a movie. So we're going to be talking about uh, what the afterlife is really like. And we're also going to give you the, uh, some sources where you can continue your reading and understand where the best evidence is. Because a lot of people think, oh, we don't know. Do you ever hear people who say, oh, nobody knows what's going to happen when we die? Do you hear that? Yeah, all the time. I hear that all the time. Nobody knows. How can we possibly know? Well, we do know. We've got a pretty good idea. And that's what we're going to talk about. Mark Pitstick is a wonderful, wonderful ambassador for AREI. He's he crazy. has got so many gifts and so many things he's done and he's going to be talking about some of the most frequently asked questions that he gets because um, he's not only interested in the next life he's interested in this life as well he's a chiropractor and a doctor of alternative medicine and he's interested in the whole package spiritual he's, growth everything. he's part of the soul phone foundation too isn't he not he is he's going yep. to tell you all about the soul phone as well and uh He's, he, he is a wonderful, dedicated afterlife uh, ambassador. Again, we have a, an hour and a half lunch. We have lots of wonderful restaurants in the hotel and nearby. And after lunch, da-da, we have the panel. 
with George Nuri. Now, you were on the panel last year. Oh, it was can, so much fun. Yeah, it was Can great. you tell us, this goes for an hour and a quarter. It's going to be a lot of fun. Tell us what happens on well, the panel. George Nori, first of all, is the host of Coast to Coast AM, which I think is the, well, when I last looked, it was the 10th largest radio show in the world. And he's on in the wee hours of the night here in the States, talking about afterlife, mystical things, so many different things. He's very famous. He's very funny. And he believes in the afterlife. He's even written a book on it. So he gets, he comes to the symposium. And for this, he has, he'll have these six, six different speakers on stage with them. And uh, the audience members can ask some questions. So he will collect all these pieces of paper. And then he will just randomly pick a question and randomly ask a speaker. So it gets everybody on their toes, but you get to hear the thoughts behind um, these afterlife questions from the experts. So it's, uh, there's a lot of laughter because he's got a great sense of humor, but there's also some very special words that get spoken that I tell you, if you're a person that gets inspired and gets the goosebumps when something resonates and gets a little bit like, oh, it's you know, really good, you're just filled with the goosebumps for, for that. Really great. And, and you'll have a smile on your face because he brings so much fun to it as well. And for once, you won't have to make a choice because everybody is going to be in the ballroom for George Nuri and the Q&A. We're going to have Rosemary Ellen Guiley, Mark Anthony, Scott Milligan, Walter Semkew with Reincarnation, Arizona Bell, who's a lovely young lady. She's representing our millennials. She's going to be there and got a wonderful magazine, Spirit Writings, I think it's called. Suzanne Wilson is our head of mediumship research. That's going to be a dynamite panel. It's mm -hmm. going to be so exciting. And then after that, immediately after that, we're going to have the three mediums platform demonstration, 90 minutes of reading. That's exciting. Tina, Mark and Jamie. And I don't know if you were there last year, Sandra, but sometimes you have three people reading the same person. That's three right. Mediums. This is really exciting when you actually get that sense of um, each of them can see the person who's there and Incredible. each of them are getting a little bit more information from that person. Absolutely incredible, the, the, the three mediums. You can't possibly miss that. And, and it's not practical for every, you know, 700 and some persons to get a reading, but they're so specific that you can tell that this is real. And I just imagine all of our loved ones being there on stage in their invisible way, trying to get in touch with the, the medium to you know, get through for each one of us. But to hear this, how specific these messages are and how the, the receiver is so moved, you realize that our loved ones are crowding all around us in that ballroom. You know, we just can't can see you, them, but they're there. Can you imagine the energy in that ballroom? With yeah. all the, the, we've taken photos in the past and the orbs that are there are around us. The energy is there and you're going to take that energy away with you. Mm -hmm. This is something that you can't get from watching the video. You, yeah. you actually, this will actually increase your ability to communicate yourself. So it's just like a big energy transfer. That's right. From from five until seven, we'll all be zooming around and gathering cocktails. in the hotel lobby. <laughs> Cocktail cocktails. Hour, five cocktails. until seven in the foyer. And this is your chance again to talk with speakers, to talk, yes. to mix with people. But then we have the amazing Saturday night banquet. This is an optional dress. This should be fun. Come as you were in a past life. <coughs> Pardon me or earlier in your present life. <clears throat> so you can wear school uniform if you like, if we have anybody into, into, into their school days. Oh, um, my. <laughs> we, we, I'm sure we're going to have emperors and we're going to have monks and nuns and we're going to have... It, you don't have but please don't feel that you have to dress up. Right. If, if you're a concerned... Australians are a little bit more conservative. We don't get Halloween. We don't get that practice. 
You, oh. Do you dress up for Halloween, Sarah? Yes, sure. I might bring a boa or fun glasses or who knows. Oh, that would be Just great. Like maybe a little tiara, maybe. Yeah. Tiaras or a boa. Yeah, or, it doesn't have to be it, too much. It doesn't have to doesn't be the full have, You don't dress. have to do the full kit and caboodle. It can be. That's right. You can, ju you can just have a wig and a pipe if you like, or, or, or some right. funny, funny glasses, or well, entirely up to you. But it, or, or you can go glam. That's the other thing. We can have That's roaring twenties, or we can have anything you like. It's it's really just a fun night. And, and prizes, we go, prizes for best costume. Prizes, prizes, prizes for best costume. And we're going to have Academy Award style presentations. And this is George at his best. George and Tom Danheiser, his producer, they're going to have a lot of fun with this. They're so and much fun. These guys are so funny and so yeah. great that it's like a night of comedy. You don't want to miss it. And again, if you register for one of the banquets, you get to be put in the drawing. And um, I don't know if you mentioned this earlier, but the, there's going to be a couple of readings with Suzanne Wilson that are going to be uh, uh, raffle winners. They'll go raffle winners. And Suzanne is someone who, in my experience, out of all the readings I've ever had, she's the best I've ever had. And she doesn't do private readings anymore. She teaches. So it is a rare thing. So two lucky people are going to get readings from I'm, Suzanne. I'm not sure if it's two or one. I know there's one, one definitely with Suzanne. There okay. might be, and there could be a number of other readings. Yes. We're, at the moment, we're, we're the gathering the new, we're gathered, I think the one with Suzanne will be the grand prize, but okay. we're, we're, we're actually there's going to be one. gathering or at least one, definitely. Yes. And that's going to be amazing. So which day are you going to come Saturday, Friday or Saturday? If you had to pick one day, it's really hard, isn't it? I'd Why come to both, come Wendy. I, Why don't you come I would come to the whole thing. I'm making the a whole trip thing, to the car, two, doing it I all. think it's $200, $278 for both days, uh, <clears throat> which is amazing. Or if you can only afford one day, uh, $178 for all day, all of these sessions plus the banquet. So Plus, there's you, Sunday. Sunday's part. If you now Sunday, if you if you come for the yeah. whole thing, you can also come for Sunday. That's right. So much good stuff. Sunday morning, Arizona Bell from Spirit Guides Magazine is going to be talking about grief, and she is an amazing young presenter. Yes. Uh, we have you had Arizona on on your your show? Not yet. Not yet. Nope. You must have Arizona. She is so articulate and so deep. Uh, you know, you, you think, oh, goodness me, what would a, uh, a, a young person in their 20s know about grief? She does. And she, she really has nailed it. She's got some wonderful things. We're bringing in Dr. Professor Erlander Haraldson uh, from Iceland. We're bringing him in by Skype. He's one of the leading researchers in the afterlife done a whole lot of books, but he's particularly interested in children who speak of memories of a past life. He's got a new book out on that, and that's going to be wonderful. Rob Blackburn is a developing physical medium. He's uh, the medium for Craig Hogan's team, Craig Hogan's circle, and he's been doing a whole lot of research on spirit teams. Who are physical mediums really working with on the other side? I'm pretty sure he's been in touch with Scott and with David as well on this. But yes. uh, that should be and a very interesting presentation. Rob's a school teacher by day. You know, so it's, you know, when I first started this, Wendy, I was under the impression that we had a, uh, all these people involved in the afterlife research or these airy fairy people. And they are, we are professionals. You know, we got the school yeah. teachers, we've got the scientists, we've got the doctors. Um, I'm a chef, <laughs> but it, it's yeah. all kinds of really good people. So you are amongst this normal group of people that you will want to have as friends for the rest of your life that speak the lingo and just great. Absolutely. At 10 o'clock, we're going to have a panel on how to publish your own books. One of the things that we find is that when people have a lot of uh, experiences of the afterlife, they're really keen to share them with others. Mm -hmm. And we want to outline some of the ways that you can go about publishing them cheaply, inexpensively, 
and we'll go through the process of how to get them on Amazon. So um, that should be very useful for those who want to do that. Debbie Johnston, those, everybody loves animals, my God. Everybody, everybody wants to know what happened to their pussycat or their dog. My little, my little animals died in my arms and I really want to know that they're waiting for me on the other side. I think they everybody, are. everybody who's had an animal will, yes. will, will know that an animal communicator like Debbie is able to uh, show you how you can connect with your own little animal and know without a doubt that they're fine. Now, you mentioned earlier that Sherry Pearl is talking about, uh, knows about EVP, and she's going to go through that. She's going to go through new developments in recording the voices of loved ones in spirit. So she's going to be showing you how to do it. She's actually got put a lot of resources online. Karen Dahlman is going to talk about the Ouija board, how to use it and what to be careful of. Um, a we don't have a long session on Sunday morning because a lot of people will be checking out of the hotel and getting ready to leave. But That's So we're right. actually closing uh, at 11.45. But then Mark uh, Pickstick is going to do the angel wash. Have you heard about the angel wash, uh, Sandra? Uh, uh, yes, last year that was so very special bringing tears to many, many eyes. Very that special. goes for an hour and people walk slowly with their eyes closed between two lines of loving people, being uplifted, hugged, touched, whispering positive words about having their chakras energy. It's an energy boost. And uh, Mark uh, is telling us that it gives you a taste of angels, but actually uh, of, of what it's like uh, when you have a near-death experience, to feel unconditional love. And that's, that's right. just a, a tiny, tiny taste of what it's like. At the same time, we're going to be having a, uh, the alternative to the angel wash is we're getting people together to talk about the Zoom groups. These are our online groups. And this is where we want people to come together, meet their group leaders, although they will have already by, by then, but we want people to come and talk about a group they'd like to lead. If you've been inspired by this at the symposium or your day, you said, oh, gosh, I'd really like to share automatic writing or I'd really like to do one on something else that they've done or on crystals or something that they're passionate about. Come along, meet us, and we'll set you up. And we'll also have some of the group leaders. We've got an EVP and ITC group with Keith Clark, physical mediumship group hosted by Rob Blackburn. We've got an animals in the afterlife group hosted by Gretchen Bickett. And Susan Barnes is teaching mental mediumship online. So we've got all these people that you can come and meet before lunchtime. And then of course, this, this is just such an amazing banquet in itself of, of things. In the afternoon, we have more workshops. Um, again, we have Rosemary Ellen Guiley is doing a repeat of her uh, communicating to, with the afterlife using a black mirror. Ellie Peche is going to talk about her healing technique. Tina Powers, the, the medium, is going to learning to trust yourself and messages you're receiving from your loved ones. And Mark Anthony, the psychic lawyer, is going to do a two-hour platform demonstration of mental mediumship. That's going to be what great. a feast and what a choice. I can't wait. And for our listener slash viewer right now, one thing I often say is, um, you know, we, we at AREI have this dream of people really understanding the afterlife is real or soul having a human experience that your loved ones are around you. And I think back to the end of the 1800s when these two brothers had a dream of having a flying machine, the Wright brothers, and how the whole world laughed at them and it's never going to happen. And they didn't take no for an answer. They kept going. And because of them, you know, we have every, all the transportation we have now with airplane travel and the commerce 
And we would have never thought that somebody thought it was just a dream. The internet, they thought, would never catch on. And here we are, joined right now. So in the entire world, the people that are the Wright brothers of afterlife communications connections or the gang here at the Afterlife Research and Education Institute, the AREI. We are loving. We are joined arm in arm. There's no competition between anybody. We are all on the same side to get this word out globally. And if you can be at the symposium, there's still a few spaces left, afterlifesymposium.org to register. I do believe, Wendy, there's, there might be a couple of the presentations that are going to be broadcast live. Is that still in the We're plans? still working on that, but we are hoping to be able to live stream yeah. eight or nine of the presentations. Well, that's still in the works, but we will be making an announcement in the next couple of days. And if they are videoed, they will be able to, uh, people will be able to purchase a package to watch one or more of those presentations. Yes. Uh, for those, particularly for those of your listeners in other countries or people who uh, just cannot get there for all kinds of issues of you know, work or childcare or mobility or, or just the, the, the cost of it. And yes. we're working to make those very accessible. But that'll be announced in the next couple of weeks. And as yes. we say, we are selling a one day ticket for either Saturday or Sunday. Hard, no, sorry, what am I talking about? I'm sorry, so either Friday or Saturday. Can you uh, so, change the screen so it's just us again, Wendy? In the oh, big I'm sorry. Picture? Oh, that's all right. Sorry. I put the makeup on, I wanna show it off. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, okay. I'm, you know, I'm just teasing. We have to keep our sense of humor. Because we do. this, yeah, this, and I, and I understand for our listener of you right now, you may be someone who has lost a loved one and you are grieving deeply. And Wendy and I have been there. You know, I have not lost a child. I've lost parent, grandparent, pet. Um, I know we all experience grief differently, but I think one thing that unites all of us is that we've had that experience. So know that you will be surrounded that pe with people that have been there, that love you, that will listen um, I tell you, I don't know exactly how our spirit guides are working, but sometimes you find yourself sitting next to the person you needed to sit next to. So it's Absolutely. a time to get out of your own head as much as we're drawn to, I don't know anybody there, I'll just participate because I think most of the people coming are traveling alone. Just come. And I know for myself at every break, there will, I have a banner that will be up and I'll have a book table, um, or not a book table, but a table there. So I will be available. I always wear this color blue so you can find me easily and uh, you know what I look like. But I mean, we're there. Most of the speakers will be in the main hall in between the different yeah. speakers. Yeah. And things. That, that's come talk to us. Doing. Come yeah. talk to us. We will be there. I will be, I will be there every minute from the beginning to the end. So I'm very happy to talk to anybody. I'm very happy to listen. I want to yes. hear your stories. I'm working with Joe Higgins is collecting stories for one of an, another book on signs. So I'll Excellent. be working with Joe. And we want to hear your experiences of angels. Uh, the banquets are going to be a wonderful opportunity to talk and connect with people. So um, come along and we hope to have, have an, as everybody says, it's a love fest. We're going to have a ball. It is. Come along is. and just be prepared to have your whole world expanded. It is, once you actually get this, your life changes. Don't you agree, Sandra? No your doubt about changes. it. You it's, can't live life the same way. For a little time you can. It's very often I forget some of this and then all of a sudden I'm reminded. I thought, oh, but, okay. but you get back quicker. Yeah. Once, you, once you actually get that life is eternal, that you don't have to cram it all in this year, it's kind no. of like, oh, Relax. What, what, what an amazing thing this is. That, and I do that, believe, Wendy, that and I've interviewed now this is this is interview 271 believe it or not but when we feel good when we feel love when we laugh 
that raises our vibration. And the higher the vibration, the easier connection with those in the spirit world. So don't be surprised if you might have a dream visit or all of a sudden a thought will come to your head. Or if you think, you know, you might have a room to yourself and you might all of a sudden think your grandmother's sitting next to you on the bed. All these things are possible because you've raised your vibration, you feel good, you're yes. in the present moment. And, and this kind of thing happens by engaging in this conversation. So, totally. Yeah, totally. and if you can't make it, we understand, but get involved with the Zoom group. I can't recommend enough going to Afterlife Institute dot org it's just right now it's just 25 dollars a year but you'll get on the email list so all the new stuff all the zoom meetings that come out you'll get emails links to things um and and it's a cheap price to just be involved even if you can't attend but um yeah yeah, love fest i'm feeling the love right now it's it's exciting it's i mean goodness me we're traveling a lot of people are traveling a long way that's right in a way, that's actually good because you're actually in a different space when you travel. You're more open and you're, you're kind of like you're there, you're committed once you get there and people will be sort of out. It's, it creates like a, a buffer zone. You're out of your everyday life. Mm-hmm. And I can assure you that this will be something that you will remember for the rest of your life. And it's really funny because people connect with other people. Oh, you were at the such and such symposium and I remember you. And, and right. it, does, it does create, what we're trying to do is that the bonds that you create there will be retained through our ongoing Zoom groups. And this is very powerful. I think you'd agree, Sandra, that the combination of when you, you listen to somebody online, when people listen to you online and then they meet you in the flesh, they feel like they know you because it's, yeah. it's like, like I, Sandra is my best friend. I listen to her every week. <laughs> so, and yeah. I am, I'm just me and I'm happy to see everybody. You know, you're not going to find anyone with the big egos and, somebody that's not approachable we're just we, regular we, we don't have egos in arei sorry we we have we have a sign on the door no egos he goes at the door leave your egos at the door uh, we're all in service which is which is what it's got to be it's it's yeah. it's it's a different way of being we have to come together as one we have, um, right. you know no egos uh, just just love and just service which is the way you are that's thank you. Well, Wendy, I think we should close this ep- episode and give these listeners and viewers a break. But I want to thank you for being our guest today. Number one, I want to thank you and your husband, Victor. I'm sorry he couldn't join us today, but for being such a stand for letting the world know that uh, death is an illusion. The afterlife is real. I want people to go to victorzamet.com and sign up for the weekly free (laughs) afterlife report. Again, you go to afterlifeinstitute.org and become a member of AREI. You can join us at the symposium, afterlifesymposium.org. Sign up for the workshops, come to the banquets. I mean, if you can. And uh, again, my home base or our home base is we don't die radio.com, which you can now find 271 episodes of um, why you should believe in the afterlife from experts and help through grief and help to have a powerful life. Because if we don't die, who are we? We are souls having a human experience. You're special. Absolutely. You're one of a kind. Your life matters. You are loved. You've got a whole team of in visible people around you that you can connect with that are supporting you. When you close your eyes the very last time here on earth, you're going to be surprised when you open them and your loved ones are around you cheering you on like you're crossing the finish line. Your pets will be there and you will really realize uh, how special life is. So with that, I want to leave you. Wendy and I want to leave you. Um, We want to thank you for listening. Thank you for viewing. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, come see us at the symposium. Visit wedontdieradio.com. I love you all and thank you and we'll see you soon.